Good evening, everyone. Uh, open trust you had a good day today. We'll get started and uh, see if we have any questions. We, of course, did not meet yesterday. Pastor met with the teachers at his house yesterday afternoon. And uh, so we uh, last talked Saturday from Exodus. And uh, we're looking at Exodus 10, uh, primarily those first two verses and getting a, an understanding of that and uh, kind of comparing that to where we are and what we're seeing today, meaning uh, pulling this, pulling truth out of that to see that the Pharaoh that this is referring to is, does not uh, relate to what we've been taught this means. So uh, Pastor opened that up for us, and that was our discussion uh, last uh, um, last we met on Saturday and, and led to some other things. But are there any questions about any of that or anything else that may have uh, gotten your attention? Okay. What about, uh, I'll ask this question, what about any of the, the, the teachers or facilitators? You guys have any reflections on yesterday that you'd like to share? I would like to ask the question to the group. Okay. Um, are there any apprehensions or discomfort about tomorrow? Anyone? This is Ramel. Yes. Um, I don't have any apprehension, but what I'm finding in the office, a lot of people are coming and asking or expressing, I should say, that they're having anxiety and worries about tomorrow. And, and Pastor, I would like to say the same thing. I, I've been hearing from friends who are um who are a little scared and 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 the majority of them are having some worries um about the same situation okay anyone wants to address those apprehensions or does the anxiety before before I speak to it please go ahead I just wanted some some clarity. Is it is it uh, maybe a fear of uh, violence or the outcome? For me, both. Um, it's majority of them are terrified of Trump winning, and then they are concerned. Some have expressed concerns afterwards whether he wins or loses. Same here, Ron. Okay. And then you have some here in Gaffney were saying yesterday, telling people go around telling people not to go out the house to stay in because something was going to happen to the ones that come out and go to the voting polls. So some of them are actually scared to go out. The reason. The reason that we have been controlled all of these years, especially after the um, Reconstruction period in the 1870s, is because of fear. Whatever you fear will come upon you. because you draw it to you. Fear can be dealt with if you choose to. In Mount Bayou, Mississippi, the Klan terrorized that town because it was a 100% black town. And when 
a group of African men made a decision that they were tired of it. The, um, the, the African man who uh, fed coal to the engine had access to the whistle on the train. And he also had his ear to the ground about what the Klan was planning to do. And he had a signal that would have been worked out with the African males in Mount Bayou. And if the Klan were coming, he signaled them if they were making plans to um, terrorize them. And the men fought back. They didn't have to fight back but a couple of times. And they left them alone. Fear is what gave them the boldness that made them attack them in the first place. It's the whole thing that uh, uh, that um, Reverend Hawkins used to say to me. If a man knew that a rabbit had a gun, he wouldn't hunt the rabbit. You don't need a gun. All you need is to believe what you say you believe. If you know who you are and you have truly embraced that, you are obligated to protect all these people you're talking about. And you're protecting them has nothing to do with having a weapon. We have seen violence meeting violence with people who are armed and nothing has changed. We have not seen people armed with the knowledge and evidence of who they are, knowing what spirituality is, not religion, not Christianity, not Judaism, not Islam, knowing what spirituality is. When, you are, when we are armed with the, the um, essence of who we are, knowing that for a fact, knowing that because we are experiencing it, then we are more powerful than any weapon can be. We can silence every single weapon. We have the power to remove every weapon from the hands of those who seeks to use them. Because no one, regardless of where they are or who they are, can overpower spirituality, righteousness, and the desire for righteousness to prevail always subdues unrighteousness. Remember who you are, embrace it, remind yourself of that. And doing so will arm you so that you are able to be the protector for those people about whom you are speaking. Any questions about that or comments? No, thank you, Pastor. Thank you for bringing it up. Appreciate that. Anyone else? I just, uh, yeah, I, I guess I just want to add that we, this is what we've been prepared for. There's nothing we're not prepared for. This has been a journey and, and we felt the changes. We felt the, the energy shifts uh, all along and the closeness, the bond, and uh, this is what it's about. So uh, again, the scripture, uh, I think uh, we wrestle not against principality, against flesh and blood. I mean, that's, this is what this is talking about. So this is who we this is who we are. It's who you are, and collectively, this is who we are. Oh, so, 
not that your brain has fear. Any other questions for comment? Teresa has already spoken, but Camille and, and, and Kathy, uh, Neil, you guys, are you um, okay with what was said? Or do you have questions about it? This is Ramel. I'm comfortable with what was said. Um. And thank you for reminding me that's what we were, that's what we've been starting preparing ourselves for questions that come like this. So thank you. Thank you. I'm set back. Thank you. See, we have got to a a place in a space that supersedes time that allows us to move to a, a place of order even before we get there based on time. What am I saying to you? Just like we spoke about everything being revealed it was revealed then, but it was manifested at a later date. We have to embrace it. We have to make it real to us before it's real to anyone. Regardless of how many times you have to say it to yourself, constantly remind yourself who you are. If this is truly your desired journey, make sure that you embrace it above anything else in your life. This should be a priority that nothing else can take the place of because we are not talking about a church service. We are not talking about a classroom of academia. What we are talking about is the life sustenance for humanity. And that supersedes everything. Thank you. Ron? Thank you. Questions or comments, anyone? You know what I just thought of? Why some excuse me, why are some of the people uh and I say around here that I've heard talking, they're afraid of what's gonna happen tomorrow, but they are not afraid what's coming across the pulpit. Because because they do. Okay, go ahead. I thought you were finished. I'm sorry. And, it, and it's destroying some of the minds of the people because they are falling for anything. It's because they have been indoctrinated since childhood. When you have been told something all your life and you've never seen anything different, you've never been exposed to anything different, and even if you have been exposed to it, you rejected it because it did not look like what you've been told all your life. So the, you can't expect a different response if you refuse to open your heart and at least search for what you are being shown that's, that's beyond what you have been told all your life. All we can do is put it in the macro. All we can do is take uh, advantage of every opportunity we have to speak the truth about everything, especially in regards to spirituality.
Does that help you? Okay. Can I see? Okay, I care. You're on mute. What, what did he say? Did the, the, uh, the, the pastor's response help you at all? Oh, yes. I said yes, thanks. Okay. Sorry. Didn't hear you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, uh, I, I believe something with, with everything in me. I believe in our struggle to recognize who we are. Uh, the energy in us is the African is 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 the the action of the world we 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 keep the the earth revolving and we are the ones that bring energy to the fear we're the ones that fan that flame and uh that's you know looking at it from a totally spiritual perspective but that's all it is and 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 we recognize that we are spiritual and recognize what we mean uh to the earth what we mean to the universe and what we talk about when we talk about putting things in the macro uh this this fear can't hurt you on its own unless you give energy to it oh we not only protect us ourselves as pastor said but we we protect, we, we protect everyone, everyone under this umbrella. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. As a matter of fact, I too run. I'm looking forward to tomorrow, but more so to the aftermath of tomorrow because that's when the real work begins, you know? Mm -hmm, exactly. The, okay. Go ahead, Ron. I'm, I'm done. I'm just, just thinking out loud. Go ahead. The, the thoughts of um, fear come from a lack of understanding anything spiritual. We have been taught to fear by virtue of what we were forced to witness. We have not seen, we have read about, we have been told about the brutality of the barbarians who slaughtered our people simply because they wanted to vote or because they voted differently than um, they were told. We've been, we have, we have been through that and still going through that. But it only functions because, as Ron said earlier, we give life to it. When Jesus, um, or shall I say, was attributed to this person named that they call Jesus, Jesus, when you look at that, is talking about deliverance. So, in that story about the, um, the people who were demonically possessed, in that story, we read where the demons left those who were possessed and entered into the pigs and ran off a cliff. Are you guys familiar with that story? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. That's where we are right now. All that story is telling us is this. Well, let me do a disclaimer first. 
please understand what I'm about to tell you, I have not always known because I have not only participated, but I have led people into the casting out of demons. And <clears throat> we were successful because we were sincere. We were not trying to make a name for ourselves. We were sincere, but we did not realize that there is no such thing as an entity demon, deception, deceiver. That's what that should have been translated as. So this story is about when your mind deceives you, when your environment around you controls your mind because you are more attuned to what your eyes see. That governs your thoughts. When your ears are open to the voice of evil, of barbaric, um, people of a barbaric nature, that influences your mindset. And you become afraid or you become barbaric in nature. It depends on um, what you are playing with in your mind. And all this story is saying is that in order for you to be delivered from that mindset, you have to make a choice to do it. Jesus did not say, I'll cast you out in the name of Jesus. That, that would have been crazy. But he, that was not said. This is telling you that you have the power to govern your thoughts to the extent that you can live in fear, you can live in chaos, or you can live in order. And I'm not talking about your external environment. I'm talking about inwardly. Because fear is not external. Fear is inward. You make a choice. And, and when it talks about these pigs, it's simply talking about these type of thoughts is not a part of who you were created to be. You were not created to embrace these kinds of thoughts because they're detrimental to you as well as those around you. That's what the pigs represent. And when the pigs ran off the cliff, what he's saying is, when you deal with these thoughts from within, they will never rise in you again because you will not allow them to. This is no different than where we are now. The church, the mosque, the synagogue has given us a spirit of fear in order to control us. If you fear one thing, it's easy for, to make you fear something else. When you know who you are, and you know that you're a spirit and, <clears throat> and you're the one who carries this body around. It's not the other way around. You carry the body, it doesn't care for you because without you, it can't live. When you wrap your mind around that, you are able to discern the difference between what you see with your eyes and what you're shown with your eye. Stop living based on what your eyes show you and your ears hear, because both of them are speaking to you. When you live spiritually, those thoughts may come 
but they cannot find a home in you because you have cast them aside. You have cast them out. Is this making sense? Question? I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna ask you for a little bit more detail, okay? okay. Um I'm I'm this if looking at the scripture, Jesus never addressed the demons. The demons addressed him first. So what you're saying then is here I am and I'm having some apprehensions about something, let's say tomorrow. And I don't try to push it aside. I don't ignore it. I don't get busy so I don't have to think about it. I confront it. I, I, I confront the thought in my mind. And by confronting the thought, um, it's what gives you the answer to, or, or by confronting the thought, then is what makes the thought dissipate or takes away the power of the thought. Am I? It, 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 yes. Straight uh, down from it. Okay. So, because because he didn't he did like as you say it it does not say he said who is here it, it said that he had terror that demons had terrorized other men so you you have to you, you can't run from yourself this is a thought that's in you and you deal with it by confronting it and and take it from there why are you thinking <laughs> When the demon said, "Why are you? Why are you thinking this? Why you? Why are you allowing this to control your thoughts?" And what happened? It says that um, when the demons were cast out, they entered a pig. Jesus did not say, "I cast you out in the name of Jesus." What he was, what's being said here, is that. The essence of who you are is confronted by thoughts that are foreign to you. The thoughts that men have put inside of you rather than the mindset that you were created with. And, they, and, and what's being said here is the energy of apprehension, fear, whatever, is saying to you, why are you here? What brought you to this state? Bottom line, you better than this. This is not how you think. And if you continue to pursue that without dealing with it, without confronting it, that will give you uh, um, anxiety about what is to come. But when you confront it and embrace the reality of the energy that you are, that energy that challenged you can be repurposed because it has no home in you and your mindset. Therefore, it does not control or influence you. Does that help, Ron? Am I being a bit confusing? No, not at all. I, I, I see it. Is, is anybody else confused? Does that make sense to you? Good it's evening, everyone. Song. I'm not confused, Ron, but my... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you're quite all right. Go ahead. Okay. My question was, so should that have been interpreted as casting down as opposed to casting out? Of yes. casting down, a tearing down strongholds, because what you're describing, what I'm hearing you, if I'm hearing you correctly, Pastor, you're describing the tearing down or the pulling down or casting down strongholds that take place in our thoughts, in our mind. And um, we know that religious, they're, they're those religious zealots that have talked about casting out, casting out all of these things in a made millions from ministries about casting out demons and casting out all these things. But what I'm hearing you say that it really should be just casting down 
when it rises up in us to cast it down, those thoughts. Is that correct? That is correct. It's casting it down. It's uprooting it. It's, it's taking the life from it. All of that. Okay. All Thank of, you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All of that is the description of the same. Any other there questions? Was someone else. Go ahead, Ron. No, I'm just saying there was someone else I thought there was uh, had a question. Jamil, I think. Jamil? No, I didn't have a question. I was just saying it does strike home how you're defining what that scripture means. It, it strikes home. It makes sense to me. Okay. Thank you. Huh? Yeah, not only yeah, yeah, that's that that helps from here on out. I mean that's that's valuable what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah. A anyone else? A any other questions or, or or thank you for the uh uh honesty though and, and uh talking about the, the fear or anxiety, how you want to look at it. Uh, I need it to be discussed. Yeah. And again, uh, go yeah, ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh -uh, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to say, I want to reiterate that I am not talking about something that I have not gone through myself. I admit readily, well, my mind was in the understand, misunderstanding of that, yet it worked because of the sincerity. That's all. Mm -hmm. It was not for popularity, it was not for money. It was to help people who I truly felt were possessed by demons when in actuality, they were not. They were possessed by adversarial thoughts that was never meant for them to embrace. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, is it just me, but there's a different feeling in the air and a different look? Um, I noticed that yesterday, but, oh, I think beginning Saturday, it's a different feel in the air and things look different to me. And is it just me or has anyone else experienced that? I have. Things are different. That The energy is different. Anyone else? I just thought it was because the time changed. No, baby. No, ma'am. Are, are you referring to just how we, what that's, we're sensing right now? That's what I'm referring to, that what you cannot explain. I'm going to say yes, it is very different for me. I feel like we're in a new era, if that's the right word, is, a is, new era. Yes. We've entered a new time. Not I don't a new know time. the time's right. No. New era. A new time. We have entered a new space within time. Okay. A new space. Yes. I do feel that way. And, and, and that's because of what you are experiencing. It's difficult to explain. Has anyone else, or is anyone else experiencing that? Don't all of you speak at one time. All you got to do is say yes or no. Yes, real. And no. I've been, the only thing I've been, the biggest feeling, it was just a calmness. No uh, regret what we have, you know, put out there. Right. Thank but you. Tell me this, tell me this, Pastor. In that same 
verse that you that you y'all that y'all was in about the pig. When he asked Jesus about uh don't destroy him and not only that he they want to go into the pigs, Jesus the one told him, Go ahead, you permit it. What, and what, that's why he, wait a minute, wait a minute. what did Jesus say? I, I think Jesus had said, you, you can. Okay. Is there someone who has that scripture up? Would you read it, please? Because I don't even know where it is. I just remember the story. Yeah. Go ahead. Hello. Charles, I'm I'm looking, I'm waiting for somebody to find that scripture. I'm gonna start, I'm looking to now. Okay. I'm in uh Matthew eight, chapter twenty chapter eight, yeah, verse I'm um, start at verse twenty eight. When he came to the other side into the country of the Gadarenes, two men who were demon possessed met him as they were coming out of the tombs. They were so extremely violent that no one could pass by that way. And they cried out saying, what business do we have with each other? Son of God, have you come here to torment us before the time? Now there was a herd of many swine feeding at the distance from them. The demons began to entreat him saying, if you are, going to cast us out, send us into the herd of swine. And he said to them, go. And they came out and went into the shrine, swine, and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and perished in the water. And the herdsmen ran away and went into the city and reported everything, including what he had, what had happened to the demonics. I, I'll stop there. Okay. Any questions about that? I have one. Mm -hmm. So why did the why why did that um, the demons say it wasn't it like you weren't supposed to show up here yet? You why you was that thought? To, you're not supposed to be tormenting those yet. Um, that there's, story. There's something. To say. Huh? I was just saying that just that's what threw a flag, red flag up to me. That's a, that's what really got my attention about this um story. Why am I maybe being, why am I being tormented by this? Were you gonna say something? Maybe the time he's talking about is now. And, and, maybe maybe these things in here are not history lessons like we've been taught that they are. Maybe maybe they're sitting there dormant on pages waiting for someone to bring life to them. Why why do why are you here? Why are these thoughts tormenting you? This is you dealing with you. This is not some external entity dealing with you. This is you. Why are you tormented? But with this anxiety about what is to come. Why? Why are you holding on to this thought? Why? If if you are asked why, then that means that you have authority over the thoughts or over as is written the demons. You over those adversarial thoughts emotions, whatever, you have authority over them. There is a conversation between your mind and your soul. And you have a decision to make. You can continuously be tormented by it, unable to sleep at night, unable to focus, uh, not really wanting to go outside tomorrow, those kinds of things. You can allow yourself to be tormented by 
or you can take the life from it. Does that make sense, Evelyn? It, 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 I'm, I'm, it, I'm, I'm May thinking I say about something? it. I'll process it. Yeah. May I say something? Because it's, it's like, hello? Yeah, I say, may, I, may I say something? Yes, sir. The issue is this. This story is so deeply embedded in us as it is written. And it is written in a form that says there was a man named Jesus who these people who were possessed by uh, entities of a demonic nature came to uh, talk to Jesus. This story was written that way for a purpose of fear. The meaning of the story does not is not written that way. The message inside of the story is not about people, individuals external of this man called Jesus. This is about the community that lives within you. Does that make sense? I'm speaking to primarily you, Ellen, but anyone else, of course. Oh, I'm, I'm processing because Pastor Jay, when I see where it's, it's like, they were expecting him but then they didn't expect him to come, it to come so soon, if that makes sense. Okay. Let's hear what you just and said. Maybe I'm reading it literally. Yeah. You're dealing with it literally. None of the people yes, that, yeah. who, who you guys ex, um, described with this anxiety, none of them thought they would be, feel like this until this day come. I mean, came. So you weren't expecting this, but it appeared, the thought, the anxiety. A week ago, you weren't expecting this, but now it's here. Does that make sense so far? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying, yeah, what you're saying is it, it, it resonated, it makes sense. So it is not about the, the literacy of the story, uh, of what's written. It is about the spiritual message that's in the, the metaphor or the, in the story. Does that make sense? To me, it does now. Because the analogy you just used, it, yeah, that, that makes sense. Okay. See, Especially about the election part coming. The understanding of the scriptures cannot be done simply because you want to impress somebody or simply because uh, you want an outstanding message to deliver so you can be popular, you can get some money or whatever. Understanding of the scripture comes by deep desire, and a type of initiation. And that initiation is not about punishment. It's not about making you go through something other than desiring to understand the true essence of what's being written. This is not written to make you shout. This is not written to make you feel good. This is written as a mirror so you can see who you are. And you can see how you are to approach the aspects of what happens within the confines of this earth consciousness. And the consciousness of this earth, because of the dominant power, is adversarial. And what we are doing, when we talk about putting it in the macro, we are confronting the adversarial consciousness of this earth with the with the um the, the purpose being as above so is below is that clear yes but i have another question okay 
Why did they use pig? Because the, because the pig is considered unclean? Yes. And if that's the case, what does that mean? Is it, a, it what happened when it was in the pigs? It went, they run off a hill, some translations say a cliff, right? Into the sea. And yes. they were what? No more. Yes. They were no more. Which means that those adversarial thoughts that you pushed away from, that you uprooted, that, that stronghold that you pulled down, that, that was um, competing with who you were created to be. You overrode it and you dismissed it from your presence. And the reason it was no more is because the life that you were given it by, by how you were dealing with it was taken away from it and it was no more. Does that make sense? Can I ask a question about the time thing? We keep talking about uh, astrological things, right? The, the, the planets lining up, being in the fifth dimension, being in a uh, different space. We just talked about that tonight. Perhaps deliverance and, and, and um, what we're calling Jesus represents that new phase of life, that different place, that different space that you're in. And the demon represents time. He represents that which you have left behind. So with their talk that he's talking to him from a different place, from a different world, from a different space. And the the demon being left behind sees everything as a cycle and he doesn't understand that time. He's saying it's not time. In other words, if if deliverance comes forth, it evaporates time. There is no time. And so they're speaking, having a conversation from two totally different places. And I'm messing that up, uh, trying to explain it. But does that make sense at all? Or, or is, do I need to talk some more about that? <clears throat> yeah, talk a little bit more. Well, if 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 we're saying we're from a different space, if we're talking about uh, being in in the age of Aquarius, and and I've talked to you about uh, being in different dimensions, I, I think they're talking from two totally different places. Uh, okay. The demon represents. Uh, the, the mindfulness of man and the the daily grind that eats away at your mind. And Jesus, representing deliverance, talks about that part of you that has risen above that. So you're not in that same space. You're not in the same place. And it it takes precedence over anything that's still captured in time. So all these things that that we see and we talk about now, uh, a black woman being president, all of this is above time. Nobody saw this coming. But because of your faith, because of the journey you're willing to take, it erased time. It erased these things that uh, may, may not supposed to be happening now, but they're happening in this space because the space has been created for them to happen. The election, somebody, the election of the president lives in two places. It lives in the space of time as well as spirituality. What do I mean by that? We talk about the African mother on the throne, right? That's spiritual. That's... that's um, that's outside of time, right? Right. When we talk about the woman herself occupying the seat of the presidency, that's within the realm of time. Makes sense so far? 
Yes. Which, because if it were not inside the realm of time, then we would not have to wait till January 20th for an inauguration. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So this tells me that when you are functioning as a spiritual being, you understand the connection between time and space. And if we are seeing it this way, which it really is this way, we cannot look at this, this metaphor as being as being a story of liter uh, a literal story or a literal account about something that happened. We have to see it both in space and in time. In space, because the spiritual nature of this is saying, your earthly consciousness is saying that you are afraid, that you are having anxiety. And this thing is taking root in you. Your spiritual essence is saying, go. It's not going to happen. It's not who I am. And your spiritual essence dissipates this thought that lives in time, in your mind. The idea of resisting this thought is not in your mind, it's in your soul. It's the spiritual essence of you. The, the physicality or the, the one that's bound by time is the thought of anxiety. When you pull that stronghold down, it dissipates because now the essence of you have embraced the reality of space spiritual space and spiritual space always overcomes earth consciousness bound by time. Does that make sense? Yes, that's to me. Anyone else? Yes. So Tomorrow is time. How many, and I want everyone to respond to this, please. How many of you believe that Kamala Harris will be elected tomorrow? I do. No doubt. I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. But you have just, go ahead. Was that someone else? What you have just done is functioned in space and not time. You have spoken spiritually because you have seen what is to come. Tomorrow, when it happens, this is a manifestation of a spiritual desire. Can you see that? Yes. If if we yes, if we don't believe it, if we don't believe it, then we cannot expect it to manifest. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 So when we lay down tonight. We don't even have to give any consideration to tomorrow because tomorrow has enough troubles of its own and we've already solved those problems. We solve those problems because we are not bound by time. We supersede time. That's the essence of who you are. All these things talking about, 
when, when I say to you, if I say to you something like, well, um, these number of people are going to be elected, they get elected, then that's just a manifestation of what I've been shown. Make sense? Yes, James, it does. Thank you. Yeah, it makes sense. Yes. Any other questions or comments? I have a, a, a question. We're still in that same chapter. Why? Why? It, it, you know, it, it was those men instead of any women. Why did they was in these two men, and on why the scripture was written like this? But it should have been human, Charles. Human. Should have okay. been human. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah. Anyone else? This is Valerie. Question: What did the, so? Uh, what did the cave represent? Them, the demons coming out of the cave. A cramped space. A place that was hidden inside of you that you didn't even know was there. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. That's a good question. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, this is Angela. I was going to ask about the drowning. They drowned in in the water. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, yeah, that was the, what I was going to ask. They went into the sea and they were no more, right? What what does yeah. I, I, sea means to roar, a roaring sound. Um, I'm trying to remember what it was. I know that's what it was from my uh, Hebrew. The question is, is does this say sea? But even if it does. And they would they dissipated. They went into a place where they were not that they would not rise from again. Have you ever heard, had the thought of hurting somebody? Not me. So since you have one, <laughs> <laughs> then where are those thoughts now? They're in a place of no return. The anger, mm -hmm. the hatred, all those things. Yeah. Are cast into the sea of no return. This is figuratively. This is not literal. Does that help you, Angel? Angel? Yes. Okay. Anyone else? Or any questions about that question that Angela brought up? I do have a follow. So that is um, dealing when you um, go ahead, Angela. I I was going to ask you. That's the same as uh, dealing with um, one's um, well, weather minds or whatever emotions or fears or whatever. This you dealing with them so that they will be. No more, not saying that they can never come back, but at least you dealt with it and you're at, you're at peace about whatever it may be. Yes, and it does not, it cannot come back unless you allow it to. Yeah, that, okay. Anyone else? Any questions about that? Yeah, you, you, don't don't leave that one open. Let's talk about that one, unless you allow it to. There's something that you may know is detrimental to you, or something that you feel is harmful, even, and you allow it to come back for what reason? 
maybe because you're comfortable in that environment? Like church. Right? Like this concept of, of religion that has been forced upon us and a God Serapis called Jesus or Zeus and we in, 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 we are caught up in that and we allow it to come back and be the dominant force. Is that what you're asking, Ron, or talking about? Yeah, just, yeah. Under what circumstances would you allow that? Why would you? I think what, it's very pleasure. good reason. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you want to be accepted by your family. Um, you feel more comfortable in that environment. You're not certain whether what you are being taught or what you see or, or what you are reading is true or not. There's, there's several different reasons, um, at least I think so, I believe so anyway, that you would allow yourself to revert to that, right? Okay. Because right now, think about this. We're talking, right? And mm -hmm. we can get off this phone and talk to all these people we know who are having anxiety about tomorrow. And some of them would say, you know, okay, that makes sense. But others will allow it to come right back. And some would never release it. Questions about that? Can you see that? Is that something we need to talk about at some point? Having unhealthy thoughts or feelings that we are so comfortable with or so fearful of letting go that we hold on to them and we know that they're detrimental to us or even harmful or uh, causing illness or something, but we just hold on to it because that's all we've ever known. Um. I remember Catherine talking about sitting with something. Remember that? Yeah. Had she not sat with it, it would have eaten her up. Am I right, Kay? She's on, but I don't know whether she's on the phone or not. Okay. But you do understand what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Uh, and that is something we may need you to look at at the same time that we look at mental illness, psychological trauma. Yeah. That's all I got, people. Good session. Anybody? Questions? Comments? Yes, this is Angela. I have another question about something different. Um, okay. The question I have is um, about meditation. I know we talked about meditation, but the, the process, you know, the process of how we, we sit down and we prepare ourselves to meditate, but it, are we already meditating but not may not be aware of it? That instead of Happen to sit down and meditate if we connected to everything that is the universe. I mean, ain't that something that's already taking place and just might not be aware of it? If you're not aware of it, it's not taking place as far as you're concerned. For example, you've always been a spirit, right? Mm hmm Yes. You've always been aware of it. Nope. And that's why you call yourself a human owner. It's like having money in the bank and you don't know it's there, but it's there in your name. So there's nothing you could do with it because you don't know it's there. Does that make sense? Y yes, it makes sense. But when, when you do become aware. What now?
now that you're aware of it, yeah. um, mm -hmm. now that you're aware of it, you respond to it differently. You always meditate, but you don't call mm -hmm. it meditation. Let's say that um, someone stole something from you, right? And it upsets you, you're angry. And every time you sit down or every time you lay down in bed, that's your focus. You're meditating on that. You're giving energy to that. And nothing in nothing it changes with you emotionally because you are holding on to the thing that rattled you. As opposed to focusing on something totally different than that, like forgiveness. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. I get it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Pastor, this is Kathy. Did you ask me a question? I'm sorry I had stepped away for a moment. Yeah, I did. I, 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 was, I said that um, you had mentioned something about you having sat with something. And I said that um, if you had not set, sat with it, it would have uh, um, eaten you up. You yeah. sat with it to, to um, get beyond the feelings that you were experiencing because of it. Yes, that is correct. Okay. That is correct. And on the heels of what um, Angela was asking, too, I think something new was meditation for me because I understand exactly what she's asking about being in a state of, or, or staying in a state of meditation, so to speak, and I, and I may be framing it poorly, but um, something new that I'm learning through meditation is now we understand how to call on the ancestors in meditation. So that's something that goes beyond what I thought meditation was in the beginning from what we learned about meditation in the beginning, as things begin to evolve with us and we begin to understand who we are spiritually and how all things connect spiritually, we we understand what it means now even more about the cloud of witnesses that are are waiting and waiting. I, and I and I'm and if I'm saying this correctly, they're waiting for us to wake up to the fact that they're there waiting <clears throat> to help guide us through things in life. And, and part of meditation now is inviting that, them to, to come in and help guide and steer us in the direction that we need to go when we're contemplating something or when, when we're dealing with something that feels overwhelming and to just help with the burden of whatever it is we're dealing with. And, and I may be saying it poorly, but am I saying that correctly? You are. You, you are. Um. One of the, I think one of the drawbacks that, that a lot of people have with um, trusting the guidance of the ancestors is that we have been taught that that's the money, you know? That we are worshiping uh, entities that are dead. And that's a sin. We've been taught that. And you have to deal with that on your own. Of course, ask questions about it if you have any. But as far as you being settled with it, that's something you're going to have to do. And sometimes being settled with it does not come until you can get answers to your questions so, so that you can have some sense of the of um experiencing the presence of the ancestors. And I would dare say to you that had it not been for the guidance of the ancestors, we would not be understanding what we are being shown. We would still be living in the present, living with a lie, in the presence of a lie, without knowing what truth even looks like. Makes sense, God. Hmm. All right. Hello. Can you can you hear me? Go ahead, Sheldon. 
I agree 100%. That is uh, the equivalent of trying to... Speak louder, please. Okay, I said I agree with you 100%. I said the equivalent of being comfortable and not fearful of looking at the ancestors as little more. So uh, I thought a different story, of course, the way that I actually uh, came from. Um, it's the equivalent of needing to accomplish something, like balance on something, but in order to do it, you have to be uh, calm and let uh, go and naturally do it uh, versus fighting. So to have a uh, fear uh, in a sense while still trying to communicate uh, with the ancestors through meditation is to actively be fighting against that at the at the same time. Thank you. Which it is a process and um, I, I, I actually was saying, so you didn't actually uh, interrupt me, but then uh, the, 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 the thoughts or the information kept uh, coming. So you in, in, in order to stop, oh, okay. So what, can, can you hear everything I'm saying now? Yeah. Okay. In order to actually, I don't want to say deal with that, but to work with that, for everyone that's in the sound of my uh, voice who has a fear of uh, the ancestors in terms of thinking at, uh, of it as like you know, worshiping the uh, devil, uh, demonic or witchcraft or anything like that, that needs to be uh, addressed. So the quickest way uh, to, to get into that point where one can actually uh, commune and hear and be taught and be uh, guided by the ancestors is to work on addressing uh, that. Uh, once that is uh, addressed, uh, everything else will uh, come uh, a lot easier. Uh, and to even go uh, further is not that we're introducing something uh, that wasn't always uh, there. It was just that we in a sense, from what we taught, were taught into that fear, uh, cut that communication, um, uh, that uh, in a sense, that relationship off. I'm done. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, let, me, let me show you something. The scriptures speak of that uh, anyway. You remember when Saul went to what was deemed to be a witch in search of answers? Remember that? Yes, sir. Yeah. Saul went to a, um, a seer in order to contact the ancestors because Saul did not know or believe he could do it. So that's talking about if you are uh, if you are uncomfortable with doing that, or if you feel like you don't know how to do it then it's okay for you to consult someone who does know how to speak to the ancestors on your behalf. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That Jesus did the same thing. Ancestors, remember? On the mountain? Hello? You're right, Rip. Yeah. Yeah. This is consulting the ancestors. Now, now you see how clearly you how easily rather you can see that connection between ancestors and how easy it was to see it, but right with it being right before your eyes. But because we've been taught that consulting ancestors is the money, we never allowed that to um, enter our thoughts about that situation on the mountain. We never allowed that to enter us. We never ended, entertained that as even being possible because of what of the way it's written in the scriptures. Can you see that? Well, I, I think that's a 
also a part of our journey as we are uh as we uncover truth we're rediscovering the scriptures and seeing ourselves in them so that's part of the uncovering i think and you, and, and we can't do that in a in a seminary we can't do that in a religion class we do that You have to embrace your origin and your current spiritual status, being aware of it in order to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Not on that, but uh, tell me a little bit about this fluoride in the water. Fluoride was put in the water because in order to protect the teeth, because there was um, there there was a tremendous amount of tooth decay um, in America in in um, the early parts uh, of the fifties, I think it was, and they started putting fluoride in the water to combat that. Now, what is doing now? Um, I have read instances that it actually builds up a uh, crust around the um, pineal gland and inhibits uh, the light to enter. Now, what do I believe about that? Even if that's true, You are spiritual. You are spirit. And regardless of what happens to your physical body, it is impossible for it to interfere with your spiritual essence. Because you are spirit. Does that make sense? Guys, questions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is that clear? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Can you can you see that? Or does it make sense to you? See, I make, yeah. I make do, sense. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. I do not believe that anything can inhibit your spiritual journey except you. Regardless of what happened to this body, it does not affect your spirit. What do we say to people? When people are sick, what do we ask them? Or we ask someone about them, are they in good spirit? Do you think that that's just a bumper sticker saying? That's real. Because if they are not up spiritually in terms of their emotions, then them having their body to recover is more difficult. Am I right? Yeah, you're right, Jane. Thank you. Huh. I know it makes sense because we do that, don't we? You know right. Yes, yeah, we do. Exactly. Thank you. Questions, comments? Okay, Mr. Roy, I'm done. The place to take a pause, guys. No more questions. Okay. Look forward to, to this evening, tonight, tomorrow. I do. Say again. Yeah. So I look forward to tonight and, and this tomorrow yeah. morning and the energy. Yeah. I do too. So, Very great. Let's enjoy well. Yeah. Yeah. Gratitude. Yes, sir. Enjoy it.
But uh, thank you, guys. Very, very enlightening discussion. And uh, appreciate all your energy. Look forward to hearing from you. I think it's going to be an exciting week. Can't wait till Saturday. We get together and discuss this. And uh, jot down any any thoughts or questions or, you know, anything you may hear. And, uh, look forward to Saturday talking about this stuff. Have a great week, okay? And thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye.